Hey party people, Panda Brady here, and it's time for another Ruby R&D. This time we're doing episodes 9 and 10. Episode 9, we start out with the Battle of the Monotones. Cinder and Raven have some back and forth, witty banter, before finally getting down to business. Apparently, Vernal is the maiden, and that's why Cinder is here. Because Salem wants the relics, and so they need the key. Cinder claims they'll leave the bandit clan alone if Raven helps them get the relic. Raven agrees if they help her kill Crow. Why? That's right. He knows I have spring. And if I help you get your relic, he's going to become a problem. Yeah, sure, whatever. They agree to it, but decide to wait until the White Fangs attack on Haven. Watts has this scene. Don't think I don't see what you're after. If this falls to pieces over your grudge with a child, I will not be taking the blame. But honestly, he shouldn't worry. Let's put it that way. Cinder tells Watts to head back, and then we jump over to Menagerie, where the battle against the White Fang's assassination attempt is in full swing. But we don't stay very long. We hop over to Raven, who has the dumbest piece of writing in the season. Salem only uses people until they are no longer useful. Hmm? She's arguing over the fact that helping Cinder isn't a good idea, but she wants to help the tribe. Small scene of nothing with Crow. Uh, then we're back to Blake, where she starts a battle against Ilya. Or at least it looks that way until episode 10. Crow and Oz have a short talk about the missing huntsman. Ruby comes in and asks about Beacon's relic. Oz says it's safe. Then she forgets to ask about her silver eyes. I mean, watch. Oh, is there anything else we can help you with? Uh, uh, well, I did have one more question. No, my cane is not a relic. I have no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's infuriating. <laughs> the one power that can stop these people and you're not asking about it. Anyways... Leo calls Oz and realizes that it kind of sounds sketchy. Um, Raven asks Leo what his motivation is, and he says that he's scared, because he's the cowardly lion. He says Raven is scared too, and then we jump location again. Batman arrives and gets beaten by a tea tray from Kali. Yeah, good one. Blake and Ilya fight, talking about ideology as they fight, and usually I love these kinds of fights, but that's not how night vision works. Faunus can see in the dark just because the lights are off and Ilya became the same color doesn't mean anything. Blake sets the house on fire so she can see Ilya better. They fight talk some more, and we get some ship bait scenes. Gira breaks through the wall with Corsican Finnick in tow. Sun comes in and starts fighting Ilya in a actually good animated scene. Till it's just a shove match. A uh, pillar breaks, and Gira saves Ilya. Sun helps Gira keep from being crushed, but Finnick tries a sneak attack, ending in him getting crushed and blown up. Cully arrives, and Corset goes for the attack before being taken down by a sobbing Ilya. The White Fang are arrested, and after a rousing speech from Blake that summarizes into the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing, Ilya is forgiven for everything that's happened, and the Faunus form a militia to march to the protection of Haven. Apparently, this all happened two weeks ago. Didn't they say two days earlier? Wait, no, tomorrow is Leo's trap. Wait, what? Timeline. Hey, sorry about that. The uh, recording got messed up there at the end. Anyways, I was just saying timeline why you make no sense. Anyway, so easy, easy enough to say this season is the worst season to me so far. But let's get into the categories. Animation only really shines when Ellie and Sun fight. Everything else is par for the course, though the lighting's pretty good. Uh, voice acting, the battle of the one notes wasn't as bad as it seems, though it could have been so much better. Shrami Lee as Ilya didn't seem to give her all this time around, though that could mostly because all of her emotion had to go into crying noises for most of this one. Um, 
story was a bit annoying because of the timeline mess up there. Um, I liked Ilya's turn, but uh, I wish they would have shown something, you know, internal with it. But I guess that's just because I'm spoiled by 22 minute anime. These are about 12 minutes each. Uh, 5 out of 10 for episode 9, 8 out of 10 for episode 10. Like and share if you enjoyed. Subscribe to Panda Party, because there ain't no party like a Panda Party, because Panda Party don't stop. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.